A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you seventy-seven times. The parable of the unforgiving servant. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, Have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus concludes the parable of unforgiving servant with this word. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Dealing with God, heart is very, very important. Jeremiah says in chapter 17, verse 9, Heart is devious and perverse than anything else in the world. Who can understand it? Yes. Many people come to me and say, Father Franklin, I can forgive, but I can't forget. I can forgive, but I can't forget. This is another way that I have not forgiven at all. Those things which you are not able to forgive, they become wounds inside. Hatred inside. Hatred kills us. Forgiveness brings healing. Forgiveness brings deliverance. Forgiveness heals the diseases which we are having in our body. Conscious, unconscious and subconscious mind. Today, people are wounded. Wounded with a lot of things. Today, people are wounded. Wounded with many things. Psalm 147.3 says, 
he heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds he heals god heals jesus heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds first john chapter 2 verse 9 to 11 says if somebody says that i am in the light and he still hates his brother he is in the darkness he walks in the darkness he stumbles in the darkness and he doesn't know where he is going if somebody hates his brother hatred is equal to murder first john chapter 3 verse 15 says if you hate your brother you are a murderer yes hatred brings sickness there are many people they just wait I have heard the people are saying for me also one day will come I will see because they have done those things to me all those thoughts which are inside are ruling you controlling you and that is the binding inside of you I remember when I was preaching in a college my singer told me father Franklin there is a man in the hospital you have to come and pray for him and that day I visited many hospitals and at last uh, during we were returning back around nine o'clock she told me you have to visit this hospital today I told you I'm tired we will go tomorrow she told no 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 today only you have to go because I forgot about him and he needs a healing touch from God and as we were traveling towards the hospital she told me father this man is a very hard hearted man and he was living alone in his bungalow more than 25 years he has his wife and children but they are not living with him because of the bad habits, drinking, smoking and what not, all the problems that he had. And this poor lady, she forgave all those things and she used to come and stay with him. But he used to beat them and put them out. So she decided I will not live with him. She went to Bombay and with her children she started living a good life. And this man, one fine day, he was not opening the door. More than uh, five, six days over, the neighbors saw this man is not coming out. Immediately they called uh, uh, the people, especially the singer which wa who was with me. And they came with four or five people, those were helping. And they opened the door and they saw this man was uh, fallen on the ground. He was in a very, very bad state. And all the bottles have fallen down and uh, you know they gave him a good bath and took him to the hospital is a government hospital and when they inquired they came to know that his wife and children are there in his family and he told don't call my wife or don't call my children don't call anyone and she told me father this man is very very hard very hard. Doctors told his kidney is failed, his liver and his uh, internal parts are failed. He may not be living for a long time. We can't treat him. That's why they have just kept him on the bed. But he is having a lot of arrogance, hatred towards his family, his wife and children. He would have hit me. I thought, what to do? Then the, the musician told me, you tell him what the doctors have told. I told him, my son, do you know why I have come here? I don't know, father, why I have come here. See, since three days you are in the hospital, you are not able to go to the toilet or do your own things. But somebody is helping you. A rented man is there. Some family is taking care of you. And you are on this bed, you are on your deathbed, doctors have given up hope. Your kidneys have failed, liver is failed, lungs is failed. You may not live 
another two or three days even. I have come here to tell you that you are not going to leave before that you can reconcile with yourself and with God. He told me, Okay, if you don't want to pray here, if you don't want me to pray over you, I just go away. As I am getting up, he held my hands. He asked me, where are you going, Father? You stay, you have to pray for me. I told him, before I have to pray for you, you have to forgive. Then he told me, yes, I have hurt my wife, my children and uh, people around all those. He started repenting, crying and crying and crying. I just prayed for the grace of repentance. He told me, Father, I want to make a good confession. Okay, nearly half an hour he made a very good confession. I laid my hands on his head and prayed for him. I told him, see, Lord loves you very much. Yes, Father, I know that. Uh, that is the reason I don't know who you are. But God has sent you as an angel over here. I thank you. I thank you. Really, I thank you. Thank you very much, Father. He told me, Father, can you bring Eucharist to me? I told him, see, today is already around 11, 11.30. Tomorrow early morning around 7, 7 o'clock, 7, 7.30, I will come to you and I will give you the Eucharist. But early morning, 4 o'clock, the phone call came. He is dead. No more. Yes. I think the prayer of his wife, maybe his family, that last moment God sent me there. It's all God's plan. There are some people, they have revengeful character inside. Revenge, taking revenge. Or those hatred that keep inside against husband, wife, children, neighbors. You know, even the same compound is there. But these people they will never speak to their uncle or auntie. Even the hatred not only for them, even for their animals. If animals goes to their compound, that will not return back. Maybe it will return back with a broken hand, broken leg. You know, this is the rivalry for a, a small piece of land. A rivalry for a small way. Maybe for a tree. This rivalry. There are many people having rivalry. And they are living their life. There is no blessing. Those who are hating each other. There is no blessing for you. Sirach chapter 27 was 13. Anger and wrath. These also are abominations. Anger and wrath, these also are abominations. At a sinner holds on to them. The vengeful will face the Lord's vengeance. For he keeps a strict account of their sins. Forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done. And then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. Does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? If one has no mercy toward another like himself, can he then seek pardon for his own sins? If a mere mortal harbors wrath, who will make an atoning sacrifice for his sins? Remember the end of your life and set enmity aside. Remember corruption and death and be true to the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not be angry with your neighbor. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook faults. Sirach 28, 1-7 Yes, my dear friends, anger and wrath, these also are abominations. You know, many people are having temper. No, we call short temper, hot temper. Temper is short, short temper. Temper is hot, hot temper. If temper is high, high temper, low temper, otherwise non temper. At home, everybody is having temper nowadays. Daddy is having temper, mommy is having temper, and children are having temper. And this is the problem in society today. No peace, no patience. That's why we lose peace in our lives, in our families. 
anger and wrath, both are abominations. And God, Jesus, is going to remove those anger and wrath which is within us. The vengeful will face the Lord's vengeance, for He keeps a strict account of their sins. If you are keeping grudge or vengeance against another, don't think that God is sleeping. God is not sleeping. You go for confession. We pray as we forgive those who trespass against us. We also forgive those trespasses. If you don't forgive, God won't forgive. That is the reason the word says, He keeps a strict account of their sins. Forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. When you pray, your sins are pardoned. Does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? You have anger on your brother, sister, your father, mother, husband, children, wife, your parish priest. Do you expect healing from God? No, 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 no. If one has no mercy toward another like himself, can he then seek pardon for his own sins? If a mere mortal harbors wrath, who will make an atoning sacrifice for his sins? Remember the end of your life and set enmity aside. Remember corruption and death and be true to the commandments. Remember end of your life. Does anyone know when is your end? See, in this world, when you go to market, you buy a fridge, refrigerator, you buy a computer, they give you guarantee, one year, two year. But there is no guarantee for human being. Our guarantee is God. Remember the end of your life. You don't know, today you are going to sleep and tomorrow you may not get up in the morning. Who knows? As if we think we are living for another 100 or 200 years. Your heart may stop at any time, heart fail or heart attack. As you travel on the way, a vehicle comes and hits you and you will be no more. I have many, many examples of such incidents. And there are people who are crying. Why? Why it has happened? Remember the end of your life and the corruption of your body. You know, after the death, every animal, example, you take chicken. After the death of chicken, the rate will go as per kg. Maybe in Indian rupee, if we say 85 rupees. Maybe pork. Maybe mutton. After death there is value. But after death there is no value for human meat. Nobody wants. If somebody dies, nobody stays there also. They will run away. After 16 hours our body gets corrupted. And even though if you say my mama and dada, you cannot keep them into the refrigerator. No, 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 no. After 16 hours you have to take them and uh, uh, dispose their body into the cemetery. See, this is the human condition. Think of the end of your life. Give up your anger. Give up your wrath. Give up your hatred. Reconcile one another. That is the call of God. You know, the normal man becomes abnormal. When? The normal. He say the normal. Whom do we call a normal person? A person's BP is 120 by 80. A normal person. When he becomes abnormal, that means when the fight takes place, anger and wrath comes in him, his blood boils, and BP goes high, 150, 200. BP problem. You know, the first thing when you are getting anger, you are angry on somebody, your mind is affected. And when mind is affected, you get tension. Pension, the free pension that we all get in the world. As you listen, maybe you are in tension. And because of that tension, you get headache. Some people may be having problem with migraine, headache. 
And you know, because of this headache, there are two mouth gives us taste. You know? And when you take food, the taste also goes away, it seems. Goes off. Why? Because of hatred. Body becomes abnormal. Your parts, internal parts are very much attacked by the anger. And that's the reason some people develop gastritis, some people develop arthritis, some people develop various types of diseases in their body. They go to the doctor. They say, doctor, I'm having this problem. Doctor says, after all the checkups have done, there is no problem for you. You are perfectly all right. But when he comes home, he can't sleep because this disease, the hatred, only God, only Jesus can treat. Only he can heal. Only he can deliver you from this disease, this sickness of hatred. As friends, when you go to the doctor, nowadays, earlier days, when I was small, we had a family doctor. We all used to go to the same doctor, my mother, father, and all seven of us. But today it is not like that. Mummy is having one doctor, daddy is having another doctor, children are another doctor. And for the same person, for bone one doctor, no, another doctor, then uh, other diseases, you know, our body is full of doctors only. We go to the hospitals, and earlier days it was very easy. The treatment was very easy. Nowadays they say you have to do that checkup, this checkup, blood checkup, urine checkup, and all the checkups because there are a lot of missions. They want to put you into admit into those missions, those machines, and afterwards they will bring you out. You know, after all those things, they will say, see, you are having BP. Now today almost don't eat salt. You are having sugar. No more sugar, diabetes patient. You are having a cholesterol problem. No more the things of oily things. What you should eat? Whether mud or cow dung or you should eat. See, people today in society, they have everything. But they don't have mouth to eat. This is real. I have gone to visit one of my friend, the one arrested owner. He told me, Father, you come one day because I heard you are preaching. It's very good. You come one day to my house. I just want to speak to you. I went afternoon. He called me for food. He prepared mutton biryani and all uh, kebabs. Very good food. Meal. I enjoyed. And he was sitting with one plate of tablet and one glass of ragi malt. I asked him, why are you not eating these things? He told me I have a lot of problems, a lot of disease, ailments. And doctors have told me to drink this ragi malt. In India we call the ragi malt is the food of the poor people. And now the rich man is taking that. And tablets one plate. Morning breakfast, tablet and ragi malt. Afternoon lunch, tablet and ragi malt. Evening dinner, tablet and ragi malt. My family is a ragi malt and tablet family. Family name is gone now. Why? It is not wrong to go into the doctor. Even Sirach chapter 38 says, you can go to the doctor. You can pray to God. But why that we are sick? Why? Is it because of your hatred, grudge, revenge? Examine yourself. Who will bring you out? There is one uh, doctor, Dr. Maximilian, he writes, 99% of people are sick because of the hatred which they have in their heart. True. I have seen in my ministry, wherever I go, people have a lot of grudge against their, their own people, relatives. And because of that, they are not able to come out or forgive. They are sick. What the answer Bible gives, let us see. Matthew chapter 5 verse 43 and 44 You have heard that it was said You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy But I say to you Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you So that you may be children of your father in heaven. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is the law of the world. 
and Jesus came to fulfill the law he says but I say to you love your enemies pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your father in heaven when you love your enemies when you pray for those who persecute you you become the children of your father in heaven praise the Lord praise the Lord one day one lady called me father Franklin I have a lot of problems with my neighbors they're really treating us father they're scolding us and those words I can't bear those words she told me kindly make a prayer so that they can shut their mouth I might have thought I have some heavy call in my pocket to shut their mouth I told her have you not spoken anything to her I also gave nicely I told her you pray for her she got angry and wild she told me for father for you prayer 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 for me you're suffering I told her do you love Jesus or Satan father I love Jesus very much I recite rosary go to church read the scriptures oh very good you read scriptures open your Bible she opened her Bible Matthew chapter 5 verse 43 and 44 love your enemies pray for those who persecute you and then you will become the child of God she told me father is it written in the Bible I told you I have opened your Bible and seen that is written I never knew that is written many of you don't know what is written in the Bible that's why I read the word of God love your enemies no scripture in the world no person in the world no holy man in the world preached this message of love and forgiveness if it is preached it is by Jesus forgiveness is not defeat forgiveness is victory it is victory victory I told her you pray today onwards as you recite rosary. Maybe tell 10 Hail Mary, surrender that lady to Jesus and pray. After six months, she's calling me, Father, your prayer is successful. Now pray for my pray for my daughter for a good proposal. I asked, what happened? Now we are so close. When they make some chicken biryani, they come and give to us. And when we make something, we give to them. There is peace. It is peace given by Jesus. I told you it is not Franklin, it is the word that tells you, the teaching of Jesus, forgiveness brings healing. Pray for those who persecute you, maybe your husband is persecuting, he is a drunkard, your daddy, your mommy, your children are persecuting you, don't ever give a prayer, because prayer can bring healing and miracles, 100%, don't lose your faith. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Luke chapter 6 verse 27 and 28. But I say to you that listen. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. This is the golden rule of Christianity. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Verse 37, Luke chapter 6, 37. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 12, 21 says, Defeat the enemy with your goodness, not with your badness. Defeat the enemy with your goodness. Forgiveness is not defeat. Forgiveness is victory. Pray for those who persecute you. There's a message of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 says, So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister 
and then come and offer your gift. Without reconciliation, don't offer your gift. Yes. So wonderful words of Jesus. He says, so when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister is having something against you, don't wait that let them come. You go. You go and reconcile. Because forgiveness is not defeat, it is victory. When you go, if they are not receiving you, if they are not accepting you, if they are ill-treating you, they will bring judgment on themselves. You ask forgiveness, you go and reconcile. If the person is not ready to reconcile, his end will be like Judas. The person when he asks forgiveness, there is a power in forgiveness. Surely that person will be touched with that mighty power of forgiveness that comes and flows from God. And Bible says it's the importance of the Eucharist and forgiveness, Jesus speaks. When you come to the church, when you come for prayer, pass reconcile. Now let me tell you about the Eucharist and reconciliation. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 onwards, I will read it for you, the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. That the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This piece of bread is not here after us, it's only bread that is my body. Consecration, prayer. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, until he comes. Eucharist is the source and summit of our Christian Catholic faith. It is the heart of our life, Christian life. Old Testament, this is covenant, New Testament, sealed with the blood of Jesus. We need not have any animal's blood, any bird blood. No, 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 no. It is the blood of Jesus sanctified us. His body was broken, blood was shed. He instituted the Eucharist and he told us, do this in remembrance. It is not only the commemoration. In every Eucharist, the Lord is present. Every Eucharist is a miracle, healing. And we are receiving Him. And the healing, deliverance takes place. The greatest sacrament, this thing, one is reconciliation and Eucharist. Frequently we receive them. Paul continues saying, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner. What manner? Unworthy manner. What is this unworthy manner? Keeping grudge, hatred against another, not going for confession, making this body as the temple of drinks, drugs, sex and all those things. See, carefully listen this word. When I read this word, I was touched. My life changed. If you receive Jesus with an unworthy manner, my friend, my brother, my sister, as you listen, examine your conscience. Examine yourself. Do you receive Jesus with an unworthy manner? Do you have anger against another? Now, this is the time. That's why Jesus told 
when you offer the sacrifice reconcile reconciliation should take place Therefore, eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves. There are two things. The first part you are speaking about the bread and wine which turns into the body and blood of Jesus. And he says, till when this? This will go on. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes again. Precincts after through Him, with Him. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. This is the foundation of our faith. Died, rose again. Come again. Till he comes, this Eucharist will go on, go on, go on. Whoever receives this with unworthy manner, examine yourselves. See, I'll come to this one. That's why when you come for Eucharist, priest says to offer the sacrifice in a worthy manner. Let us acknowledge our sins and failures. Ask the good Lord for pardon and strength. Yes, true. That doesn't become confession. You might not have got a chance for confession. Here you have come to the church and you are telling Lord I am sorry. I confess to Almighty God you are telling. And you are receiving the sacrament, communion. Go immediately for a good confession. If you have not got a chance. God is so merciful, so loving says this examine yourself that means examining ourselves it is not the confession in fullness it is we are sorry lord we are going to surrender this sin into the confession examine yourselves therefore and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup for all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves if you eat the body and blood of Christ or you participate of a Eucharist with an unworthy manner, you bring judgment against yourself. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill and some have died. You are ill, weak and died. You go to doctor, doctors are not finding your disease, ailment. That's why we don't know. That can't be seen in the stethoscope or the machines that they have. True. It is, you have received the Lord with an unworthy manner. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Yes, my friends. Jesus instituted the Eucharist. Whatever Jesus preached, he practiced in his life. See, the Last Supper, his disciples were there. The word of Jesus, the preaching of Jesus came to his mind, which he preached. Love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. When you go to the table, offer sacrifice. If your brother is having something against you, reconcile. The brother is having Jesus' brother. Judas is having something against Jesus. Jesus is not having anything against Judas. And Jesus keeps the bread and wine there. He goes, this is the Monday Thursday celebration. He goes to the feet of his disciples. He goes to every one of them and tells them, forgive me if I have done something against you. And he goes to Judas. He washes his feet. He looks into his eyes, says, Judas, I love you, forgive me. But Judas has not forgiven. He told, I hate you. And Jesus broke the bread and gave to everyone. When Judas received bread, John chapter 13, verse 27. John 13, 27. It's written like this. When he received the bread, Satan entered in him. If you receive bread with an unworthy manner, sickness, illness you will be weak and death will enter in your life he went out 
And he went out and he committed the crime which is against his own conscience. He committed suicide. Jesus on the cross. Look at Jesus. He was on the cross. Nailed on the cross. Those people gave him that a mighty cross. Sculpted the pillar. Not only that, the crowning with thorns. They took him as a sheep to be slaughtered. And he is on the cross now. His hands are with nails. People are mocking at him. If you are son of man, come down. We believe in you. We trust in you. You are a healer. They started mocking at him. Joking at him. But he didn't get angry. Pray for those who persecute you. They nailed his hands. They nailed his legs. You see in the world, in the cinemas, movies, or in novels, there is revenge. A villain is there. Everybody wants to eliminate that villain. But here Jesus never tried to eliminate those who opposed him. Tried to change by the grace of God. That is Christianity and Christian love and forgiveness. You know, in a family, if father get hurts from his uh, children, he will say, he will curse. Mother will curse, mother may curse. But Jesus never cursed. He said they nailed his hands and legs, but they couldn't nail his heart. He told, father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Yes. Because of Jesus' prayer on the cross, I and you, still we are alive, even though we have received Jesus with an unworthy manner. Because of the prayer of the Lord, Father, forgive that father, forgive that sister, forgive that brother, forgive that husband, forgive that wife, forgive that youth, forgive that child. They do not know what they are doing. Oh, merciful Lord, thank you for your wonderful, wonderful prayer. Yes, friends. And I'm speaking this forgiveness out of my own experience. When I was in seminary, the problem started with me is the gastritis. Traffic rules are same for everyone, whether I'm a priest or you, whether you're a layman. I, my cassock, I'm a priest. If I go in between middle of the road, what happens? Today you'll ask when Father Franklin will come. Tomorrow you'll ask when is his funeral. Same thing, if I hate my own authorities, my own brother priests and sisters, my own people, if I receive Jesus with an unworthy manner at the age of 30 or 32, I may develop BP, sugar and attacks, then I may die in this life. Why? It was in seminary days in 1994 once I developed uh, gastritis in, in me. I was ordained for the diocese of Shumoga in Karnataka. And after that I was in a parish and this gastric was never healed. I went to many doctors. One of my friends took me to a very good doctor in St. John's Medical College Hospital, Bangalore. He treated me. He told me how to take tablets for 90 days. I took 90 days tablet, but I was not healed. I used to go for retreats with my team. What is healing so many people? I had a question within me. And I never told this to my team members. Otherwise they will laugh at me. You are the fellow who preach healing and all those things. God is not healing you. God is not healing on my power. It is His anointing power. Praise the Lord. And in 2003, we had a big retreat in one of the parishes. Previous day, I couldn't sleep. I went to the brother who was with me, brother TK George. I told him, see, I'm having this problem. He told me, get some tablets. And he advised me to take tablets and pray the blood of Jesus. I took the tablets, but I couldn't sleep that night. Next day. People were reconciled. There was sacrament of reconciliation. Many priests came to hear confession. 
and after that we had adoration after that in this adoration brother was preaching the same message of forgiveness if you have anything against your brother yes my first appointment was disappointment for me I had a grudge against my own priests my own authorities I could not digest the ill treatment some of them they gave me some of my own friends and so some letters in my files that a brother told us do you want Jesus or do you want hatred Satan I knelt in front of the blessed sacrament and cried Lord because of you I have left my family you called me when I was a small boy in second standard. After my tenth, I joined the seminary. Now I am a priest. It is not for my sake. I am a priest to proclaim your love to the people. Give me the grace to experience that love. I prayed sincerely. And there was a priest, Father Elias Sequera. I knelt in front of him. I told him I can't forgive those people who hurt me. Kindly lay your hands and pray for the forgiveness, the greatest disease that I have in me. He prayed for me. People were reconciling one another. And God gave a message to the brother during adoration. God is healing a priest who is having the problem of gastric gastritis. Yes. And I am that person. That is the reason I preach the forgiveness for you. Forgiveness brings healing. Give up your hatred. After giving this sermon in many many parishes, Gulf countries, even in Cyprus and Israel and European countries, people are telling me, Father, from so many years we were away. Now we have reconciled. Husband and wife have reconciled. It is the power of Jesus, power of the word of God, power of the sacrament. And today I invite all of you, give up your hatred, come back to the Lord and get healed from the Lord. God. Don't leave your life in sickness and ailments. Close your eyes and I pray for the deliverance from the hatred. Lord Almighty, ever living God, Father, I pray right now all those who are listening to this message. I pray those people, those who are not able to come out of their hatred, vengeance and revengeful character. I surrender all anger, wrath from them to go out in your name, Lord. I pray, Lord, all the diseases, ailments, sickness that they are experiencing because of this hatred. Satan brings hatred. I rebuke that hatred in the mighty name of Jesus to go out from the body. Touch! Anoint, heal for your glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let you be filled with this glory, anointing and deliverance. All the hatred in your family, all the hatred among the husband and wife, in the family be broken in the name of Jesus, so that the peace will prevail, love will prevail, peace, love and joy of the Holy Ghost will prevail. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. Amen. And Amen.